Welcome to Life Church. We're so glad you're here with us. Would you stand this morning? Happy 4th of July weekend. Come on. Yes. We live in this amazing country, America, where we get to celebrate our freedom, right? Yeah, I just, sometimes I think about how blessed we are to live right now in such a time as this and in this country, that we have the freedom to, to gather together like this on a Sunday to worship the King of Kings. Isn't that amazing? We're so thankful, so thankful for our freedom. I was talking to the Lord this morning about just freedom, we're, we're, we have a new series today, Walking in the Spirit or Living, living in the Spirit. And um, the, the Lord said, the Father designed and created us for freedom. Jesus paid the price on the cross so we could live in freedom, right? And the Spirit has come so we can live and walk out our freedom. Isn't that amazing? that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us to do the, the, the thing that we were created to do was to love and to trust the Lord, to follow Him and to walk in the Spirit. And He, he designed us perfectly to do that. Isn't that amazing? It's so good. Let's just thank the Lord for our freedom. Lord, we thank you for our freedom. Thank you, Lord, that you set us free. God, you designed us, you created us perfectly so that we can hear your, your voice, we can walk and live in freedom, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've given us access to on the cross, Jesus. You've given us access to everything that we need to live an abundant, amazing life walking and living in the spirit. We thank you. Oh, you're so amazing. Wow. Amen, amen. We have these, this area open. If you guys wanna come and just worship up in the front, feel free. We wanna celebrate our freedom today. It's gonna be an amazing day.
ushers come down now and pass out the elements for communion. You guys can just hang on to those and one of our pastors will come up at the end of this song and we'll take communion together.
Thank you, Lord. You just close your eyes for a moment. Maybe raise your hands. We're going to take communion here in just a moment, but this is a, a love song to Jesus. Let's just sing that out together. Your eyes closed, hands raised. Love, you are just love. Come on, sing it out. Sing it to Jesus. act of love that anyone can do is to lay down his life for a friend. Jesus laid down his life for you and for me so that he purchased our freedom. You've been given the cup. There's two cups. The body of Jesus is in the bottom. Go ahead and take that for a moment. Hmm. He told us that he loves us. He loved us so much that he laid down his life. He took his body and he offered it willingly as a sacrifice. And, and, and the Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. The stripes that were on his body, we were healed. And so Jesus, we take this remembering what you did. We remember you. We take this and we remember you. That you offered your body for us as a sacrifice so that we could live in freedom. Your body purchased our freedom, and for that we are so grateful. And we say thank you. Let's take it together. Galatians 5, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. The NLT says, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. The blood of Jesus is more powerful than anything in the universe. Purchased our freedom. I love in Revelation how the saints, their robes were dipped in the blood of the lamb, but they were white as snow. See, in the physical, it's, it's stains, it's red, it's... But in the spiritual, we hold this as a spiritual representation of the blood of Jesus. And it's the blood of Jesus that washes us white as snow, purchased our freedom. So we say thank you, Jesus. We stay free. We stand free. We walk in the freedom that you purchased for us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us white as snow. It's physical juice, but in the spiritual realm, it is so powerful represents so much more. We say thank you and we take this now remembering your blood. Let's just sing to him just for another 30 seconds. I just love. Come on, sing to him. You, I just love you. And I just love. We don't sing about Jesus, we sing to him. I just love you, I just Raise your hands to him and just sing directly to his heart. I just love you, I just love you, oh Jesus. I just the presence of the Lord in here this morning. <laughs> so tangible. He inhabits our praises. His presence literally rests on us as we express our love to Him. Jesus, we're so grateful on this freedom weekend. The freedom that you purchased for us with your body and your blood. We're so grateful. 
Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, will you turn to someone as you make your way back to your seats? Give someone a hug next to you. Tell them that you love them. Grateful for your freedom. You celebrate them. And as you make your way back to your seats, Pastor Jim is coming up for a few things. Good morning, everyone. Happy 4th on the 3rd. Man, you guys are not that happy about the 4th. I'm a first... I'm a first-generation immigrant to America, and I'm happy about the 4th of July. America, baby! Yeah, I'm proud to be an American. It's going to be, I, I love the 4th of July, and uh, thank God uh, for the freedom that we have to be here today together to worship the Lord, and that is in part because of this great country that we live in. So we are grateful for that. And if you are uh, here today for the first time, we would love to get to know you and connect with you. And you have a connect card somewhere around about you. So when we take the offering in a moment, that would be your opportunity. Start filling it out now. And if you would put it in that bucket, right on there, I am new, so that we know that you're here for the first time. And if you're not new, this is also something you can use for prayer requests or even testimonies that you could write on there. Uh, all through the week, our staff meet here in this building, and we have communion and a little bit of worship time in the mornings before we get to our work. And we pray over these cards. We pray with you, and we believe with you for what it is that the Lord is doing in your life. So any kind of prayer request or praise report, we'd love to have that uh, as the bucket goes around right now. So uh, one quick thing before we move to our offering, um, which is an act of worship in itself. Our tithes are our 10% that we return to the Lord because it belongs to Him. It's, it's a return on the increase that He has given us in our lives. So we are thankful that we're a prosperous people. And we are generous like our Father in here. Life Church 7 is very generous. One of the things that we do is offerings are in addition to our tithes. And we give to all sorts of things. We have lots of missionaries. Um, there were a family here earlier at 9 o'clock. We have a missionary uh, couple that are in the Middle East. I was praying with her parents this morning. They're doing some stuff over there. But also you'll know that we have Second Harvest Food Bank, mobile market actually. We're on our campus last week. And this is the kind of thing that you're giving helps to support. We had, with Second Harvest, 235 families that we give food to, 12,000 pounds of food, to 827 people. How about that? Yes. So that's, we do that on a monthly basis, and that's the kind of thing that you're doing when you're giving, helping support and love our community. So let's, uh, if you'll just get your offering ready, whether it's your phone, checkbook, cash, and, um, and just switch your heart. If you close your eyes with me, and let's just switch our heart as we're giving, that we really are focusing just for a moment on this part of our worship that we're giving to Jesus because we love him. We give to the Father because we love him. We give to the Holy Spirit because we love him. So Father, we thank you for the prosperity of our lives. We thank you for the increase in our lives. We thank you that we expect that you're gonna continue to increase us and prosper us, spirit, soul, and body, and in our finances. So we return our tithes to you today. We give you our offerings because you are generous and we are generous like you because you've given us the gift of your eternal nature through your son, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. 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 We're gonna watch an announcement video while we give this morning. Thank you. Hello, Life Church 7, Mark and Rachel here. Wanna give you some announcements and some things that are coming up in July. Our heart for everyone on our church is that you get involved, you take a next step, and come into family here at the church. So there's many ways to do that here in July. What's the first one? The first one is we have Zoe coming up and I just got back from Africa and so I'm so excited to share with the women what I've seen God doing on the earth and how you guys can partner with that. And we'll just have a great time of connection together. That's coming up July 6th at 6.30. Yeah, it's gonna be really, really good. And then for the men, we have men's breakfast coming up July 9th, 8 a.m small auditorium, we would love to connect with you. There's something about men like growing together in the Lord. We just went to man camp, that was so great. 
The Bible says there's iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We want to sharpen each other. We want to grow. We want to be mighty in the kingdom. So I want you to come, and if you have a son, we, we love having sons come as well. It's a time of worship, a time of fellowship together. You'll want to be at that. And then Sunday, July 10th, we have Revival Night, hosted by our School of Supernatural Ministry. Yeah. If you're longing for an encounter with God, we believe one encounter with God can change everything in your life. And maybe for you, it's that Sunday night, July 10th. It's gonna be at 6 p.m., extended worship, and a ministry time, so you're gonna wanna come and be a part of that. I'm really excited for that, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. So next up, we have youth camp coming up, and I just wanna encourage all the youth to come out to youth camp and to sign up. Growing up, going to youth camps were some of my most favorite memories of summer and some of the places where I had the most encounters with God that really set me on the path of my life. And so I just wanna encourage, if you are a youth student, sign up for camp. It's happening July 29th through August 1st. Yeah, youth camp's gonna be amazing. So all of these opportunities, all these next steps are available for you, lifechurch7.com slash next steps. So if you want information about upcoming events or you wanna sign up for youth camp, lifechurch7.com slash next steps. Well, today we start a new series called Life in the Spirit. We're gonna be doing this series all through July and starting the series is Pastor Wes. Would you welcome, stand, welcome Pastor Wes as he comes to the stage. Good morning, thank you. Just stay standing with me. We gotta pray and ask God's grace on this time. Those that are watching live feed, we just welcome you to Life Church 7. The Holy Spirit has a good word for each one of us this morning. I'm just gonna ask this group, would you just lift your hands with me? So Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Your word is a lamp into our feet. It's a light into our path. Pastor Jim said, I seem tense in the first service. So Lord, just take all the tenseness away. <laughs> welcome your presence. Welcome your goodness. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome your word. Yeah, thank you, Father. I thank you in advance for all the freedom that you're going to bring today. Thank you in advance for the new liberty that we find in Christ Jesus. I thank you in advance for the chains that will be broken and your grace and your anointing that will be released in each one of us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And everybody said, amen. You can be seated. Pastor Jim is speaking next week, so you can be sure I'll be in the message. <laughs> so good. When I... Last week, when we closed the service, um, I just felt prompted from the Lord that we needed to respond to a family that was struggling financially. They were in jeopardy of losing their home. And I just wanted to give you an update that everything that they needed to save their home came in. Isn't that good? So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for responding. That's just, that's such a great report. And I'm so thankful. Thank, what a generous church. And I, I just so appreciate and love the generosity, appreciate each one of you. Our, my desire and our desire as a pastoral team is to equip you to win, to walk in life and to overcome, to be powerful, to be all that God's designed you to be. Uh, if you're struggling, I can tell you, if you're gonna be here long enough, you're gonna find freedom, you're gonna find joy, you're gonna find peace. Uh, the passage that I'm going to speak about today is a key passage. It's, it, if I were to describe something as the core of the gospel, it would be the passage that I'm going to talk about today, and I'll get to that in a minute. My big idea today is uh, because you belong to Christ, Christ's spirit now lives in you. Belonging is so important. And I, I've had people often say, you know, I, I've come to church or Wherever I'm at, I, I feel alone. I feel lonely. Or um, one of my favorite programs is watching Alone every year. I've watched all eight seasons, and um, I just, my, in fact, my wife and I watch it together, and uh, I, I just rejoice that I'm not alone, that I'm not trying to survive. I'm not worried about bears eating me, or me trying to eat bears, 
or uh, whatever else is running around out there. And uh, I've been out in the woods long enough to know that I don't want to live there. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's so good uh, to see each one of you. How many here, and it's okay for those who have not yet come to Christ, how many of you here have asked the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and to be your Savior? Did you just raise both of your hands? Wow, it's just so good. That's so good. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful to be able to raise your hands and say, I know Jesus, that he's my Savior. He's come into my life. He's transformed me. And um, that we pass from darkness to light. My sins have been taken away. They've been washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ that I'm saved. New life has begun in Christ. And we can say this, the biggest, big idea of all time was given a couple weeks ago, that Christ is in me and I'm in Christ. It's such a marvelous thing to think that I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. The Apostle Paul wrote, he said in Galatians 4, 19, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Here's this understanding, and a lot of it is what we're going to bring out today. When I come to Christ, I'm fully saved. I'm fully saved. But in another way, I'm just beginning. I'm just beginning on my journey of maturity and growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. So there's no half-saved Christians or partially, partially saved Christians. You ask Jesus to come in, Holy Spirit comes in, you're saved. But what happens is, is that, that there is an ongoing work of Christ, Paul said, being formed in us. In other words, over time, we become far more like Christ than what we once looked like before we came to Christ. It's the transforming grace and the power of God. Um, and as you partner with the Holy Spirit in that work, you'll grow, I've seen people grow incredibly fast in their walk with the Lord. And then I've seen other people they're taking their time. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's, just, it's just taking more time. They're saved, but it just, and, and so really what I'm talking about is this process. Walking in the spirit is being, being transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Jesus modeled, I didn't share this in the first service, Jesus modeled what it looked like to walk in the spirit. So his early life, you go to Luke chapter three and you can see that he obeys the father. He asks John the Baptist, John the Baptist to baptize him. So he's baptized in water and, and, and you can hear the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son, uh, hear him. And the Holy Spirit came and, uh, in the form of a dove. Next thing you go to Luke chapter four and you find Jesus, that the Holy Spirit leads, in some translations, that he's driven into the wilderness to be tested by the devil for 40 days. And at the end of that testing, he comes back. And here's what the scripture says in Luke, in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. It says, and he came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he stands up in uh, the synagogue and he stands before the people and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, he has anointed me to proclaim the gospel, to heal the sick, to cast out demons. The scripture says that all the people out there stood and their, every eye was fastened on him. Was fastened on him. There's something that sets us apart as we yield, as we come to Christ and we begin to yield to the Holy Spirit. There's something that the world is fascinated with our love for Jesus and his transforming power in our lives. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that were promised today that, that when, it, when it turns out that it, it just, it doesn't come out that way. Uh, politicians will often promise us all kinds of things. And then when it gets into it, there's all kinds of excuses, but things don't rarely go, do, do things get, that happen that they're promised. People will promise things. I, I was watching... Um, on TV, I was watching this, this commercial. I was very interested. It often promises are made that they just don't seem to be what they're, they don't come true. 
How many have ever purchased vitamins, powder, pills, drinks, and, uh, and then been promised that if you, when you take this, you'll have amazing health? Be 20 years younger. You can see how I would fall for it. The advertisement begins by talking about this new medical breakthrough in science. And they'll show you this chemical stuff and all this thing. And, and because you have no idea what they're talking about, you're just like, and they'll say, you'll have amazing energy, clarity of mind, which is really why I bought this stuff. Boost, <laughs> and it'll, it'll boost and restore your memory. I thought, man, restore my memory. How good would that be? Then I thought, maybe there's just some things I need to forget. I love this one. It'll make your wife spin for joy when you walk into the room. That by itself was worth the bottle. And then, of course, they tag this on there, and you'll be 20 years younger. <sighs> they provided all these exciting testimonies of professionals and lawyers, teachers, washed up athletes. This pill, cream, or drink would revitalize your health, just make you amazing. I read the story of a man who, just after a few days of taking the pill, and I was listening to him, he said, my mind became calmer than it had been for 20 years. On and on he went. Everything you need for more mental acuity. Wow. And they offered one free bottle. Bottle, listen, I'm not that gullible. But I thought, well, if this is a medical breakthrough, why not take advantage? And it's a free bottle, right? The free bottle came in the mail a few weeks later, and a number of weeks passed, and unfortunately, over time, I couldn't remember where I put my breakthrough memory bottle. <laughs> it seemed like I was still in the mid-60s. My wife wasn't breakdancing around me yet. And I hadn't experienced the unusual calm that it seemed that the manufacturers had, had really promised. Clarity, clearly this medical breakthrough that I'd hoped for and they had promised was not there. Fortunately, though, it, I don't think it hurt me. I think everyone here over, the, over 30 can relate to the human body aging and is slowing down a bit, except for Tom Brady. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, Yet God has made everything beautiful for his own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. King Solomon lived, longed to live forever. When he came to the end of his life, the thing that bothered him most is that all that he had gathered was going to be given to someone else. At the end of his life, he declared all his vanity. Like King Solomon, the mistakes made by many that he had misplaced the longing for eternity of the soul and having a relationship with God in pleasure or short-term um, enjoyment. Trying to fill the God-shaped void in our soul with pills, creams, powders, drinks, injections doesn't satisfy the deep longing of our souls. It's important, though, that I say I do take Four mile walks, I try to walk as much as I can in a day. I do take vitamins, and, um, and I try to eat healthy. So I'm not in any way speaking against that, kind of laughing. I am just saying that those won't satisfy the deep longing of your soul. Over time, they, no matter what we try to rev up our natural, our body, over time, the Bible says it, and we, and we can, you know, just go to enough funerals, you go like, eventually I'm going there. <laughs> totally, 100% in denial. I'm not going there. <laughs> you can go there, but I'm, no, there's a point to a person who wants to die, and after that comes a judgment. So, uh, and, and, I, and I've had people say, well, you know, listen, I think we can live to 150. But have you seen people in their hundreds? I'm going like, unless they can come up with something a lot better of what you look like in your hundreds, I'm ready to go when my assignment's done. Amen? How many are ready to go home and be with the Lord when your assignment's done and it's gonna be far better than it is right here on the planet, amen? 
So good. Is the tenseness gone, Pastor Jim? Okay, good, good. Question. (laughs) What does life look like to have our inward man being renewed every day? What does it look like? What does life look like? We know that this outward man is slowly passing away, but what does it look look like for the believer to have your inward man renewed every day? In In other words, what does it look like to live life in the spirit? What does it look like to overcome? What does it look like to have things that in your life that once dominated and controlled you? Addictions, habits, things in my secret life that once had such control over me, what does it look like to be free of that and to walk in joy and peace and life and anointing? That's the design for every person who comes to Christ. That's the design for all of us, that we would have life in the spirit, that we would overcome. You say, well, you know, how's that worked out for you? It has worked out amazing. My testimony is that I have had the Holy Spirit help me overcome all kinds of things in my life. My testimony is that God's grace and his goodness is greater than my need. My testimony is that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. That's my testimony. And the word of God, it's sharp and it's quick. And I'm going to cover some areas today that actually serve to fill us with confidence and grace to overcome. And also, when you understand that the word of God is... Um, absolutely inerrant. That the Holy Spirit hovered over the word of God when, old, when people, over 1,500 years, there was over 75 different writers wrote. The Holy Spirit would come upon, upon them and they would write. These are not the ancient scriptures that kind of wear out one generation and just kind of fizzle out. This is the word of God that endures forever. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says that the word of God is living and active and more powerful than a, and, more, and, and sharper than a two-edged sword. So any, never believe the lie that the word of God is somehow something, uh, 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 it's like a suggestion box. <laughs> Go and find something that you like and make it a good suggestion. My encouragement is to dig into the word of God And let the word of God expose whatever's in your life and free you so that you can walk in the spirit and walk in the anointing, the grace, and the goodness of God. How many say amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Big idea, because you belong to Christ, Christ's spirit now lives in you. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to Romans chapter 7, verses 21 through 25, and then we're going to go into Romans chapter eight, verses one through 17. It's a bit of extended reading, and I'm gonna read along. And the part that you like, just say, hallelujah. Let's try it. Hallelujah. Okay, that's not nearly loud enough. One. All right. All right. Now, if somebody, you shout hallelujah, and somebody else doesn't shout hallelujah, they're gonna go back in scripture and find out what he was, he Shouting hallelujah about. Romans chapter seven, verse 21 says this. I have discovered this principle of life. Now, Paul is setting up, you have, to go into Romans eight, you need to go back at least to this part of the passage to know what Paul is talking about in Romans eight. And he says, I've discovered this principle of life. Because it's a principle of life doesn't mean that it's right. There could be principles of life that it just seems like it's a principle, but it doesn't make it right. (laughs) The reason I'm cleaning it up is I had a person come up after the whole message and said to me, I just like verse, chapter seven, verse 23, and I was thinking like, oh no. I didn't explain like, 
this principle actually isn't the thing that's to govern your life. So I gotta say that out of the gate. I've discovered this principle in life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. So that could be a principle for some, but that shouldn't be our principle. It's okay. You can just say hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 22 says, I love God. I love God's law with all my heart. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable, per- miserable person I am. Don't say hallelujah. <laughs> oh, oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So then we get Romans 8, 1. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. This is really good. It works so much better than the first service, I can tell you. Uh, Amen? (laughs) The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end. Say an end. An end. end. To sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So that's what communion is all about. That's what communion, we, we, we remember what Jesus did in his body and his blood. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. So that's describing what life in the spirit looks like. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled, and a a better word that I think is, is given in the NIV is governed, and those who are governed by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. Amen. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control or govern your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's law and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Yeah, it's sobering. And so it's, it, it's part of it's like, we're going through just asking a question, is there any area of my life that is still controlled by an old sinful nature. And now, and knowing that the Holy Spirit is in you, and you just access, you just say, so Holy Spirit, I don't like that. Often when I'm tempted to do something or watch something, when I'm alone in a motel room by myself and I'm being tempted about something, I'll say, so Holy Spirit, what do you think about this temptation? Here's what I'm being tempted to do. And I'll just say it out loud to the Holy Spirit. I can tell you it works every time. Understanding that the Holy Spirit is with me and working in me and giving me the power to overcome and not being ashamed of what I'm being tempted by because being tempted by something isn't the sin. And he doesn't blush. Oh, Wes. That's sick, dude. <laughs> Never says that. He says, no, S, I'm breaking you free from that. Yeah. I'm giving you power to overcome. You access me so you're walking in the spirit. 
You're listening to the Holy Spirit so you can overcome. I love to say, like, every time it works, but sometimes I don't ask the Holy Spirit. I just go ahead and do it. And then the Holy Spirit goes, bummer. <laughs> and I'm being, being con- not condemned, but being convicted. And I go back and I say, so Holy Spirit, would you forgive me? I yielded to, to temptation. I thought or did or whatever. And I ask you to forgive me. And here's what the scripture says. And when you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to do what? And to from all unrighteousness. Isn't that good? Come on. That's like four hallelujahs. Wow, thank you, Lord. Verse nine, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. I'll try it again. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled or governed by the spirit the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. Verse 10 says, and Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, body grows old, listen to this, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Wow. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says this, therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. That's so good. It's a serious hallelujah. Verse 11, too late. Verse 11, (laughs) the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus, Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal body by the same spirit living in you. Therefore, because of that, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. I love that. Being tempted by something, something's going on. And then now I go, oh, I've been... Christ is transforming. His power is working in me. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I just, I, I, I'm free from that choice. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to participate in that. It just sounds like gossip. I'm just going to choose not to repeat it. I'm not obligated to. Here's the good news. You don't have to sin anymore. Right over here. You don't have to sin anymore. Oh, yeah, it brings God glory. No, it doesn't. God already has all the glory and all the praise. Sinning, when I choose to sin, there's always a level of uh, imprisonment that comes with that. And, I, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm no longer obligated to make those choices because Christ has freed me from the power of sin. Holy Spirit, take that word, make that alive to us. Verse 12, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Yeah, so I'm not going to go through life just walking in darkness. Are there times that I have trouble with sin? Yes. Are there times that I fail? Yes. But the closer I get to Jesus, the more confident that I become in his word, in his presence, in his power. The more I look like Jesus, the closer, the more that I'm walking in the spirit, the less of the flesh, sinful nature has any hold on me. As you walk with Jesus, you're designed to sin less. One hallelujah. As you're, as you're walking with Jesus, the design is, is that you sin less. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? 
Why? Because you're captivated with a person who is the savior of your soul. You have a relationship with the Spirit of God who's transforming you from the inside out. You see things in a much different perspective because the Holy Spirit is powerfully working in you. Oh, thank you, Lord. For all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. A balcony, I have not heard a peep of you, out of you up there. I'll do it again just for you. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Wow. Though I do not see you, I believe you're up there. I mean, I want to see you, it's just dark. Verse 15 says, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves can you can you just i know pastor jim and several of the other pastors they get to take this text and other things and they're going to just don't miss these next few weeks i just encourage you it's going to be so so awesome look at this so you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves instead you've received god's spirit say god's spirit when he adopted you as his own. Wow. And now we call him. So I think we ought to just stand up as God's children and let's give him a great big praise offering. Yeah, thank you, Lord. We belong to you. We belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Guess what? I'm a child of God. Top that one. And your response is, guess what? I'm a child of God. We are children of God. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're kings and priests. You're not defined by a sin that is, you're, you're really challenged with. You're defined by the fact that you belong to God. You are his child. And he, the Holy Spirit, is transforming you. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. That makes everyone who loves Jesus wealthy. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share in his glory, we must also suffer. We must also share in his suffering. So the big idea is because you belong to Christ, Christ's spirit now lives in you. Number one, power and control of the sinful nature is defeated. The old power, the sin nature that once ruled within me, that warred against my mind and my thoughts, Jesus Christ defeated on the cross. Once and for all. Jesus came to destroy the works of darkness. The old sinful nature that once dominated and controlled my life has now lost its grip. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus. The weight of shame and guilt and punishment has been lifted off of me. Christ has come, whom the Son has set free now is free indeed. The power of my old sin is broken. You just close your eyes with me, right where you're at. And I want you just to, we're going to do some practice. I want you just to breathe this over yourself. The power of any sin, just go ahead and say that just softly into your breath. The power of any sin is broken off of me. Yeah, the power to control me is broken off of me. Sin will no longer have dominion in my life. Yeah, I'm free. (laughs) That's so good. Worship team can go ahead and come. Number two, presence of the life-giving spirit is transforming me. I am free from an old nature, from an old mindset. And now Holy Spirit has given me a new mindset, a new mindset. It's the mind of Christ. 
Those who are dominated by their sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled or governed by the Holy Spirit think of things about pleasing God. The wrong mindset is a mind that is controlled by an old sin nature. The right mindset is a mind that is influenced and governed by the Holy Spirit that has the mind of Christ. When you're with me, here's a thing that you can notice. When you're with your friends and with people and you're spending time in your family, if you never talk about the things of God, there's something wrong. If you talk about everything else, really nice talk, good talk. It's so good to get together. You know, we watch 50 programs of Hallmark and I don't know, what, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but if you never talk about God in your home, if you never talk about God with your family, then ask the Holy Spirit. Say, so the Holy Spirit, you're, you're in me. You're, you're the biggest part of me that's causing me to transform. Would you come and fill my life? Would you come and fill my conversation? When I come home, you will see it. When I come home, I walk up to my house and very often I just lift up my hands. I don't care about neighbors or anything. I lift up my hands and I just bless the presence and the peace and the grace and the goodness of God on our house and on our property, on all who come. I praise, I lift up my hands to our neighborhood. I just declare God's goodness, his favor and his kindness on my neighbors. I'm always trying to talk to my neighbors and friends about Jesus. Guy across the street from me, he's getting closer and closer to coming. Just a little bit of a while ago, he said, my wife and I just the other day were talking about coming to your church at Life Church 7. It's, it's been a seven-year project. He's right across the street. the goodness of God that keeps strong. This life in the spirit. I have never had a conversation with him that would have led him away from Jesus. Because why? Because we want to walk in the spirit and people are the prize. Number three, you can stand with me. It's the promise of a new nature and a new identity. I love Romans 8, 1 through 7. For all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you've received a spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins our spirit. Say his spirit, his spirit. has joined my spirit. And I'm a child of God. And since we are children, we are his heirs. That's a big hallelujah. Yeah. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share in his glory, we will suffer in this life. So you've been given a new nature. All who belong to Christ have a new nature. All who belong to Christ have a new identity. Once I was lost, now I'm found. Once I was a slave, now I'm free. Once I was a sinner, now I'm a son and daughter. Once I was an orphan, now I'm God's favorite child. Heirs with Christ, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Would you lift your hands and would you welcome Holy Spirit to come in a fresh new way and touch you today? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord.
Thank you. Thank you, Pastor West, for a powerful word. Such a powerful passage of scripture. So much truth in that passage. Life in the spirit begins with accepting Jesus. That's how it starts. And he's the only one that can set us free. He's the only one that can transform. And maybe you don't even know half of what he was talking about. Like you don't even know what it means, but you just know that your life is out of control. Your life is a mess and you're powerless to do anything about it. But Jesus, he broke that power. He broke that power. That's exactly what that passage says. He broke that power. And so if that's you, if, if, if you've never given your life to Jesus or you're far from him and you want to come back, just raise your hand high. Just go ahead and raise your hand high and, and we'll pray. I believe there's, there's people watching online. We, you know, we have hundreds of people watch every week in several different countries. And so we're just going to pray. Can, will you all pray with me? Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I'm powerless against sin, but you've broken that power. And by faith, I step into a new life, your life in me, your spirit in me, and I will follow you the rest of my days. Amen. Amen. If I could have the prayer partners come down. Every week we make time for ministry. The body ministering to each other. It's, it's so important that we, we have this time because we're not meant to do things on our own. We're, we're part of a family. And so I just want to invite any of you down. If you need prayer for anything, whether it's physical healing or emotional healing or uh, any, anything that was in the message, just the, the renewed mind and um, just that the belief that you are a son, the spirit of God is in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Whatever it is, whatever your needs are, please come forward and, and receive prayer from these amazing men and women down here. And I just, I want to bless you as we go. So why don't, why don't you all just raise, lift up your hands. I'm just going to pray a blessing on you. Holy Spirit, thank you for the truth of this word. Thank you that we have your spirit living in us, transforming us, breaking the power of sin, revealing our identity in Christ, that we are sons and daughters, that you have overcome the power of sin and we're no longer obligated to follow the sinful nature. So Lord, I just pray blessing on every person that you would make that alive in each one of us as we go this week, that you would make that alive, the power of your spirit, that we would walk in the power of your spirit, be led by your spirit in all that we do. I bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Happy 4th of July. Enjoy celebrating America, celebrating freedom. Bless you all. We'll see you next week. Please come down if you need prayer. Hey, thank you so much for joining in with us. We appreciate having our online Life Church 7 family be a part of what we're doing. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, we want to know who you are. On lifechurch7.com next steps page, there's an opportunity for you to reach out to us and let us know uh, what God's doing in your life. And we would like to connect with you. Also, on that same page, you can find opportunities to get plugged in and to see what's coming. There's events and different things that you'll, you'll want to be a part of. So we just bless you and we'll see you next time.